And then just a little bit uh, this way. Yeah. An original member of the Memorosa group, Nick Thurman studied with Jeremy Cornelia at the Creighton Preparatory School for three years before he went to study with Audnerdrum. He is concerned with the late style of Titian and Rembrandt, but also the early Edvard Munch. So what's going on here, Nick? What's the story? Well, the story isn't definite yet, but uh, it is a tragedy. And so these two are lovers and they're living in a drought, a drought of food. And so you see there's some fishermen around, which I have to work more on. And this woman has come from the village and she's come to tell him that she's eaten some poisonous berries or mushrooms. Right, right, right. And so he's discovering now that she's fatally ill. She's, she's going to die any moment. Right, and they're standing on some kind of a summit? Yeah, they're on a cliff uh, overlooking the sort of fishing bay. Right. And the docks where the boats are parked. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're using this um, uh, manipulation of perspective, I see, with the water there. Mm -hmm. Or, or what, what's the point of that? I mean, the, the, the point is that you get a grander perspective. Right. And so you're, you're able to look up at them and down on down the landscape. Down on the landscape, yeah. But what are you th uh, thinking about doing uh, uh, in the future here? I mean, it, it, you, you think the story is not clear enough? Yeah, uh, right now the story is definitely not clear enough. And so I have to uh, make it more obvious what is going on. Right. And also why she's in this state. Yeah, and, and why they are there. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, but, and th that's, the, that's the challenge always, isn't it? I mean, you want to, uh, story-wise, it's a great thing to have a tragedy literally on a summit. Mm, yeah. But then again, like, why would they stand on the summit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah. Okay, go up to the summit, being dead tired, would you do that if you are in ill or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like yeah, exactly. what's the realism of it? Yeah. And I guess that, that's, the, that's the thing you're still figuring out that how could it be that they're standing on this mm -hmm. summit, right? Yeah. Or why would they do that? Or, and uh, the idea that I've had most recently for why they're meeting here is that he's one of the fishermen. Right. And so perhaps in the future I can show that by attaching some ropes or some sort of nets to him. Right. Something to signify that he right. is a fisherman and he's right. coming from down there right. where the boats are. Yeah. We're talking about some deep human uh, needs to be gripped by and sort of have your own story retold or, or, or sort of externalized. Yeah, and, and that's uh, part of it which is so human, is yeah, that yeah. you get that confirmation yeah, through yeah. the storytelling. Yeah. And not only that, but it's, uh, I mean, it's a representation of what's going to be consequential in your life. The most important yeah. things in life yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are told through Kishworks. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's like, I want to experience that, or hell no, I do not want to experience that, experience that at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's um, what I would say is a sort of common misconception. And you find that a lot in Greenberg, that yeah. they say that these emotions are fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, just because it's a visceral experience. Yeah, yeah. Inspired by Ald Nerdrum, Thurman has learned to compare paintings from different periods to reach an idea of what are objective standards of painting. I mean, this is so yep. well composed. Yeah. The way that you get these lines, which are all uh, going around and to her face. Yeah. We sit down to look at some surprising similarities between the early Edward Munch and the late Rembrandt. I mean, the, the main thing uh, when you see these two, which I think is extremely obvious, is that you have this extreme roughness. Yeah. And so the, the forms are dissolving into each other. Right. Where you have uh, here the beard, it's just becoming part of his clothing. Right. And you have the same thing here with Monk, where the, the chin and the neck are starting to blend, and the neck is going into the background, yeah, yeah. and the ear into the hair, and the yeah, hair yeah. into the head. Everything is just mixing into each other. It's like the form is coming out of fog or mm -hmm. whatever. 
and yet you still have very solid form. Yeah, yeah. And in that fog, you have this, this there, mm -hmm. or you have the eyelid there. Mm -hmm. or like um, this is, look at this. Like this is more or less one stroke, but yeah, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Like if you would dig digitally take that quote unquote white stripe mm -hmm. away, the whole body would be completely flat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know that's uh, you can see that also in in the sick girl. Yes. Not Here yet. we have it. Right. Oh, well, that's not a very good reproduction, but okay. Oh, um, yeah. Like if you if you actually go to see it, or mm -hmm. you find a really good production on, reproduction online. You see this thing here, mm -hmm. take that away, <laughs> almost the whole pillow turns completely flat. And this here. Oh yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. And you have this sharp line here. Yeah. yeah. So you get the sense of space. Yeah. That his body is coming across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's this little... Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. Some solid... Uh, contrasts that are not, you know, too clear, not too pure, but mm. they come in as this, uh, as this um, uh, brings out the form, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, also if you look at, like, this is just amazing how he does that. I mean, this is a bottle, yeah. and here's a spoon behind it, yeah. and here you have, you know, uh, what do you call those, the knots or the... Yeah, the, the doorknob or... Yeah, yeah knob, knob. Yeah, that's yeah. Right, yeah. And he has done, I mean, you, if, can you find that self-portrait by Rembrandt, you know, which always mix up, mix up the, the years, where he's standing with the hands down there, like ah, the okay. one, the hands are all sort of foggy. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like what he does here, it's the same thing as Monk does there. Mm. It's the way the eye perceives reality. Mm. I mean, it's like, apart from Nerdin, the, the most, uh, uh, the greatest Rembrandt student of, at least of Norway and, uh, and Scandinavia oh, in yeah, general. Yeah, uh, definitely. And even the, in the use of these colors, yeah, he's not going far away from Rembrandt. No, no. It's only the actual palette uh, yeah. which is changing. Yeah, I mean, that's the weirdest thing in the self-portable cigarette. Mm -hmm. How, uh, first when you see it, how pale it appears. Yeah. And he's very precise in choosing where to make soft edges yeah. and where to put sharp lines. Yeah. <laughs> and so you get this uh, strange effect, uh, which I noticed with this shoulder in particular. Uh, because he has these lines here yeah. and the soft edge here, yeah. that depending on where you focus, then the position of the shoulder looks like it changes. And so it, it looks like either he's, <laughs> he's, he's lifting his hand so up. So it's like dancing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, in there like. Exactly. And so he's, he's, he's either... He's either Moving the cigarettes you know, I, up I to his mouth. He has probably had Tourette's. <laughs> well, he's like has this ticks. You know. But but it, it, it appears that he's either moving the sound yeah. of the cigarette. Yeah. Or he's moving through the room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's looking at you. Yeah. And he because a clear line would stop him. Yeah, exactly. It'd be exactly. like like a fence. Mm -hmm. And that's you find Simon with the ch b yeah. baby yeah, yeah, yeah. Christ, because that is one thing I suddenly understood. Uh, uh, because. What we're talking about here is actually, well, one thing is that it's very similar to Rembrandt, but Rembrandt is very Greek. Mm -hmm. And that's also a thing that people don't generally, I, I believe, maybe, maybe I'm exaggerating my own uh, discovery here, but, but uh, I don't think people generally think of Rembrandt as very Greek, you know, because Greek is, you know, whole bodies and uh, he's sort of sitting in front of the fire all the time. Oh, but this, uh, this is very Greek. But this... Mm -hmm. The thing about yeah. the feet, I didn't never understood what the fuck is going on here. And then suddenly, the, oh, this of course is, those are the feet. Yeah. And all of this is the same thing here. And that's, I mean, that's yeah. a big note for so, uh, causality. Yeah, so we see there and there. It's mm -hmm. completely the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, but he was modern. He used bright colors. <laughs> like. can, can you see there's blue? Yeah, I know. I have to admit there's, there's blue. I, I don't like to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But you said you brought it up. Okay, how do you defend that? Well, the way I would defend that is... Yeah, if you it's, find it's just, some kind of... Explain it away somehow. It's, it's about totality. That's, that's it. Ah, if you see this in person... Very clever. It's, it's too blue, I admit. Yeah, yeah. But as a whole, mm. it works extremely well. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's, there's one, one thing I want to point out to you. Right. 
and this is something I noticed in person, yeah. which it doesn't sh it doesn't show so well here. Yeah. But this ear, yeah, is completely blending into the blue. Yeah. yeah. And then he gives a sharp line on this ear. Yeah. What is that all about? Because that should be further away. Yeah, but but it appears when when you're looking at it, it appears as if he's moving into the room. So this one is you know is dragging into the background. Into the light. And he does that multiple times. My God. You you can find that exact same uh, trick that he did there. Yeah, like, let's, okay. If we can go back to the sick child. Yeah, so what's the essence of this? What they're doing here now? The essence of this is storytelling. Story that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And to make the figures look alive. And so what he's doing with all those strange effects, uh, he's also doing it here. Yeah. And he's doing it in the face. How so? Her, her expression, mm -hmm. uh, and I haven't, I haven't seen this one in person, but I've seen some good reproductions. Mm -hmm. And depending on you know, how your eyes are moving and things like that, and how you approach the painting, then her expression changes. Right. Because if, if you see this up close, you know, she, she almost looks a little bit happy. Yeah. Like she's okay with what's going on. Right. She, she understands that she's sick and that she's going to die, but she wants to comfort her mother. Right. And so you, you can find that yeah. in many of his paintings. And you find that in the greatest masters, that not only are there uh, parts of the figures which are in motion, so to speak, but also in the expressions and the body language. That's really advanced. Thank you for watching this preview from the School of Apelles. To watch the full video and access our premium library, Go to caveoverpellas.com slash donate and become a $10 patron. That's caveoverpellas.com slash donate.